All right, so I saw this article today posted by XDA. Shout out to XDA. Shout out to Brady Snyder for posting this article. But as always, whenever I see these articles, I'd like to go ahead and kind of give my thoughts and opinions on the points they make and then kind of see where I feel on certain situations, right? So starting off right away, it's five reasons why affordable phones can't replace tablets just yet. Now, to be honest, I think where they're going to go, because I haven't looked at the, all the reasons yet, so I kind of want to go where I think they're going to go. And I would say, number one, my reason would be uh, durability, right? The inner display not being as durable as other displays are, especially when it comes to iPads with the Gorilla Glass Invictus or going with Android tablets that have just that beautiful glass display. Number two, I would probably say they're going to go with size in some way. Um... Foldable phones, well, yes, they can get up to 8-inch displays, depending if you go to some Chinese models. You're not really getting as humongous displays as, like, for example, an iPad 12.9-inch. When you get to that iPad range, you're getting really insanely crazy. Now, um, other than that, I guess battery life. Um, but even then, I mean, I don't know, because the functionality you're getting with foldable phones just really outweighs all that, but... Let's see what they're saying, because I can't think of too many reasons why a foldable phone is not better than a tablet. Number five, screen size. Okay, yeah. See, I don't know how I feel about this one, though, because at the end of the day, well, yes, I agree that obviously screen size is better than a tablet. You know, you get the outer display and the inner display usually with a foldable phone, unless you go with Surface Duo 1 2. But you're getting an, you're getting three displays total, technically. You're getting two smaller displays put together and one inside, and you get an outside display as well. So it's not like you're getting just one display. You're getting multiple displays on a foldable phone. And again, I always say it's a convenience factor, right? With a tablet, the thing that sucks really bad is you have to always have it, you know, a place to put it. Right, you go somewhere, you go out to dinner, you go, you know, out with a movie. It's hard to hold a tablet. It's humongous. With a foldable phone, you know, you can fold that right up, put that in pocket, and now it's completely disappeared and it's not in your way or causing any problems. So I don't know if I agree that this is a plus or this is a reason, because I think screen size, especially as we get longer and longer. I mean, farther and farther in the future with foldable phones, I think screen size is going to become almost obsolete at this point as we get bigger and bigger, you know, foldable phones slash, you know, tablets. Uh, so I, I definitely will say overall why screen size, in my opinion, is a nothing burger. But I guess right now, if you want to have that humongous display, you're going to have to go tablet. Number two, battery life. Yeah, I, again, like I said, that for this aspect, I will say... I think this is kind of unfair for foldable phones because they have 5G, right? 5G is going to drain your battery. They also have, of course, you know, um, a lot more apps when it comes to phone apps. I, I understand, like, tablets are really made for one purpose, which is gaming or entertainment, or they're made for, you know, productivity, but in the sense of not being a cell phone. So, with all the functionality of a cell phone added to a tablet, I feel like if you take a normal tablet and you add a cell phone to it, I mean, a cell phone functionality, you're going to see it drain in battery life too. Also, many tablets do not have 120 hertz displays. While, again, like I said, that's another factor, there's also a three screen factor. You know, these foldable phones are having two inside displays, one outside display. And even then, I mean, you got to look at the fact, like, for example, the Google Pixel Fold comes with a 48, 15 milliamp battery. The, um, op, the OnePlus Open comes with a 4,800 milliamp battery. Obviously, the Z Fold 5 is coming behind with their 4,300 milliamp battery. But these other phones come with really good batteries. So I think, well, yes, I agree that, you know, you're probably going to get a longer battery life out of an iPad or out of an Android tablet. I think you still get really good battery life out of the you know, the foldable phones, depending of, like, taking consideration what you're using it for and all the functionality of it, right? It's a trade-off. More battery life, but you get way less functionality. Creative work. See, I, I completely disagree with this. I completely. Not all foldable phones support pens and still have the crease. 
I, well, first of all, I don't think the crease stops you from creative work at all. If you want to draw on a tablet or on a portable phone, I don't think really a crease in, impacts it in any way. I will say to the aspect of it's easier to draw an iPad, I think a lot of it is because of size. The size of an iPad really helps out where it's not like a small little thing. It's a humongous display. And I will say that does help out. And also glass helps out more than a thin layer of plastic glass. You know, what we see foldable to phones. So I do agree with this that in that aspect, it does stop you. I mean, it helps you. But I don't think it stops you in any way from using a foldable phone for the purpose of, you know, creative work. I think at this moment in time, while yes, again, it's all trade-offs. This is really all trade-offs. You're going to be able to, you know, use a foldable phone for creative work. But the trade-off trade is you're not going to have as big of a display. You're not going to have this, this, and this. But what are you going to get, you know, as a trade-off? Well, you're going to get a, uh, a phone that you can take out and put in your pocket. You're going to get a phone that you can use for, you know, uh, 5G LTE, you know, whatever. You're getting all these other things with that. So, while I think it's not impossible, let alone... You know, it's. I don't think it hinders you. I think it's just a plus of having a tablet that you have that more space and more of a glass display. But you're getting the trade-off in other categories that is actually better than using a tablet, in my opinion. Number four, desktop class browser. Chrome on smartphones is still lacking for real work. See, I, I, I disagree with that. I think Chrome on, des on desktops slash on a phone, uh, I don't see there any being really any difference in all honesty. I mean, I use Chrome all the time on my Z Fold 5. I use it all the time on my, Z I mean, on my Google Pixel Fold. And I have no problem at all. And I don't feel like there really is any difference between that and, you know, desktops. I mean, you could say like the extensions and stuff like that. And yes, you're going to get more of a desktop view overall wise if you use it on a desktop. But on a foldable phone, I don't see there really being any difference. And ironically enough, I think you're probably going to find yourself. And yeah, I know they're talking about this probably article more of less than iPads and more about like, you know, Android tablets. But even then, like, I, I find myself, you know, probably having a better experience on a foldable phone than I do on a desktop when it comes to Chrome. And I don't think there's really any big difference. I think it's very much exactly the same. The only difference I will say or I will give them credit for is the fact that like extensions and stuff. But I don't really think there's much difference at all. And when I hear desktop class browsing, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, browsing has come a long way on every device, whether it's a desktop foldable phone, tablet, or whatever. But I think tablets and foldable phones, if anything, in this context here, I think they're pretty much even. Now, if we were comparing a desktop to a foldable phone, then yeah, you could make the argument with extensions. But there's no extensions on tablets. So wh why is this even a point? You don't get that ex uh, extensions on a tablet. So I don't really know if I would 100% agree with that. But anyway, durable durability. And then, by the way, this one they're actually talking about an iPad Pro. One of my favorite parts of using an iPad Pro is getting desktop class browser on a mobile device. And again, like I said, I, I still feel like, I, I mean, I use my iPad Pros. I have all three of them. I have the 12, I have 0.9, I have 11, I have the iPad Mini. I don't really get that desktop quality, in my opinion, at least, I guess. Durability. Yeah, durability is definitely, I think, number one. That should have been number one. That really should have been number one. At the end of the day, well, yes, it's nice to have... I well, First of all, I don't think the outside displays chipping like this is a problem. Because if you have used any iPads, right, and you don't have a case on it, you can bend that thing with just your hands within seconds. So the durability of iPads are actually a lot worse than foldable phones. I don't even want to hear that crap. But my point is, when it comes to inner display being durable... That is definitely a problem, right? It's you having a plastic thin layer of glass versus a actual full on piece of glass. Um, but again, when it comes to the, the body and the frame, it's a lot less durable on tablets than it is foldable phones. That's just a fact of the matter. Is the inside display is a lot, you know, worse when it comes to like you know, IQ being able to break it. But the outside display is perfect, and I think the body of these frames of all these foldable phones are perfect. So I, I really don't agree with the outside display being on the out of body being a problem. I think the problem lies on the inner display, and that's pretty much it. And I think with foldable tablet, I'm sorry, with regular tablets, the problem usually is the body 
with how big the phone is. I mean, I mean, how big the tablet is. You got to think you have a 12.9 inch tablet, right? And the problem with a lot of these tablets is that they have aluminum bodies and then there's, there's weak points throughout the tablet. So a lot of times it's actually right where the headphone, not the headphone jack, the volume rockers are. There's usually a weak point. So I, I'm interested that this article is the thing. <laughs> I'll say it like that. Um, I don't agree with the article in many ways, but I will say I understand the context of where they're coming from. But tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.